स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया टुडे वी शेल लुक एट एटीन सेंचुरी टेम्पल्स फ्रॉम द नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न डेकिन दीज आर टेम्पल्स बिल्ड लार्जली बाय द मराठाज हु आर एन असेंडेंट पावर थ्रू द एटीन सेंचुरी we are looking at these temples as an example of 18th century temple building after the moguls in a lot of places around india temple forms are shaped by the architectural vocabulary of the moguls the marathas have a very different tradition in that they have the bhumija style temples of the yadavas they have sultanate architecture for 300 years and then they have a revival style from north india from rajput lands that they also try to incorporate let us take a look at what their temples look like the earliest maratha temples have been completely altered over time and it is impossible to say for a lot of them what they originally might have looked like what we do know is that they did have vaulted systems that use quinches and pendentives they did have domes they did have minarets they had chhatris or kiosks they had again a number of elements that you would associate typically with islamic architectural forms this is the famous temple of khandoba at jaisuri uh, where again a number of forms including the tripartite entrance the three arched entrance to the sabha mandapa is more reminiscent of a mosque than it might be of a temple note the deep mala in front which is a feature of the deccan you start looking at temples that have historic roots but the superstructures have been so rebuilt that it is impossible to know what it used to look like originally but the interiors if they haven't been tampered with give us some form of clue but usually the interiors are very austere and plain you look at temples such as buleshwar and they too carry more form of the sultanates on the outside you look at the temple spires and they will have the whole vocabulary of domes and minarets not resembling a temple so much as a tomb you will have new structures built around but these two will replicate what seems to be the fashion of the region that is to say of sultanate architecture the finials on top sometimes even the shikharas the amlakas will be transformed into domical shapes that have very little to do with true traditional temples of the first millennium ce in the buleshwar temple is enclosed a yadava temple something that we have seen earlier the marathas do a lot of revival of old temples the jirnodhara and therefore they will take old temples which have fallen into disuse and build exoskeletons around them in case them in completely new built forms so as i said on the inside you might see an older traditional temple but on the outside you see a completely new temple in the 18th century late 17th century you also see an attempt at trying to revive a temple form that they know is very old that of the bhumija temples and here is a much later retake on a yadava bhumija temple so while it is bhumija in its overall form it is certainly not a yadava temple if you look at the two pilasters on the corners they completely are borrowed from the mughal baluster columns of the 18th century and also of the 17th this is what the temple looks like from a distance again a hodgepodge 
of Mughal architectural elements of sultanate architectural elements that are put together in ways to recreate the overall form of a Yadava temple. You look at early Maratha temples such as Kashi Vishveshwar in Satara district. Again the customary Deepmal, it is a temple built on a ghat on a riverside, but the spires are completely of a new order. If you look at the temple, the bottom is built in stone to make it look traditional and the top is built in brick and there is no attempt at making it look traditional and this probably is an idea that comes out of repairing and restoring older Yadava temples such as the one at Buleshwar that we saw. Uh, you build a new temple in a way that it looks like the bottom is actually old and you have revived it. And to show your contribution in terms of a revival, you build the top completely new of new material. So traditional material and a false traditional form at the bottom, new material and a completely new form on the top. This is hybridity. Both are conceits, the top and the bottom. And so, till a certain height of the cornice, everything is in stone. It is made to look like a faux Yadava temple, though we know it is completely an 18th century Maratha temple. And the top, though it mimics the Yadava Bhumija style, is meant to be understood as something completely new. Particularly if you look at the edicules on the sides, the square kutas with the Bangla roofs that the Mughals popularize. If you look at the columns inside, what had appeared to be an older temple suddenly manifests itself as new. While there are elements of these columns that have things in common with Yadava columns, a number of these ornaments are completely new. Look at the chunky blocky sculpture on top, really a hallmark of Maratha sculpture. So again, elements of Yadava columns completely made anew but composed in new ways. These are new 18th century columns on the inside of the temple. Carvings of various kinds that you would never have seen in older temples. And then you have another type of temple and we look at all these styles that you see in the mid 18th century where there is no attempt at doing anything old. It is a temple that is to be understood as a new temple of its times. All you have are a number of edicules that rise to a conical top. Now a number of these 18th century temples are in clusters such as this place called Hatti Ghat in Limd. Nearby is this temple of Koteshwar, another fine example of an 18th century temple that does not try to mimic anything from the past. Note very carefully that the bottommost tier of the Shikhara has five edicules that are square. On top of it is a 12 sided drum with blank windows. On top of it is another 12 sided drum but which is diminished in scale and right on top you have what would be an amlaka but which looks like a small ribbed dome. This transition from square to 12 sided sometimes then to 8 sided and then to circular is commonly found in these temples. The logic however is not of a North Indian temple at all. The logic here is completely of a Kutina temple with all these kutas or edicules laid out in horizontal layers till they recede and reach a pinnacle right on top. Typically set along very picturesque river banks, these temples use the river to create a number of shallow pools. The temples are very often set on ghats 
where you have a temple and the patron family's mansion just behind at a slightly higher level. The temples uh, very often derelict follow the same cubical form of a square sanctum topped by what we just saw a square base of edicules which slowly turns round as it gets to the top. Again from one temple you can see another and this kind of dialectic relationship is very important to several temple circuits. This is what it looks like from the river on the right a ghat a temple moving up to a mansion on the left hand side. The mansion of course does not survive in very good shape and therefore all you see are some walls. The composition of the temple here again is the same square base of the shikhara above a cubical sanctum you know surmounted by a number of circular structures all the way to the top. There are exceptional temples however such as Omkareshwar in Pune which is a temple built almost along the lines of a mosque plan. To begin with let us look at the completely blank and austere wall something that we saw at the Jagdishwara temple also at one of the temples in Loni Bhapkar. This is very typical of Maratha temples blank austere walls with small openings. When you get inside all you have is a series of nine vaulted spaces the central one of which is the sanctum and the sanctum has square stories on top of it that mark it as the sanctum whereas all the other bays have a set of domes. This temple is unusual because the sanctum is not at one end but in the middle of the building and this is what the plan looks like. The courtyard on your left, the sanctum in the middle surrounded by a set of eight domes and the Garbhagriha or the sanctum itself rising up in cubical fashion to a pinnacle. There are also small family temples usually every lesser nobility would build themselves a mansion and a temple under the Marathas and this is what they look like again an entrance that would more be suitable for a small mosque inside a sanctum that is a simple plain cube on which you have eight sided circular stories that go to the top and end. Notice on the corners these small chhatris with bangla roofs. So looking at all these temples what do we make of their architectural styles? What style are the Marathas building in? What does it mean for them? Why are they choosing one over another? We have seen in an early phase so as to be pious and completely re restore older temples they even start building new temples that look like older temples with new repair work on top. But let us look at the three dominant modes in which these temples are built. To begin with you first have the Yadava Bhumija revival and the reason for that is very simple. The Yadavas have built temple across the Maratha heartland. These temples are not always in good repair. It brings good merit to repair such a temple. And so what you do is you try to repair it in its own native style and sometimes you build new temples or new shikharas on old temples in a Yadava style. Of course there are no artisans who understand how the Yadava style works and so the revival Yadava style, the revival Bhumija style is always a hybrid. Notice the bottom story of the shikhara now is like a Maratha style temple. It has these blank square edicules beyond which they fit on a fake Bhumija revival shikhara. Notice the dome on top which gives it away. Then you have an import which is the North Indian shikhari style and this gets used 
in very important pilgrimage spots. The Jyotirlingas, for example, this is the temple of Bhima Shankar, which has the Shekhari style, cascading spires, reducing in size, coming all the way to the bottom. But somewhere towards the bottom, it starts getting confused with the Bhumija. And here, at the Jyotirlinga called Trambakeshwar near Nasik, you really see this. This is a temple that is built completely in the 19th century. But the plan that they've chosen for the sanctum is diamond shaped, so it's articulated. The bhadras have become long and narrow on all sides. And the only way you can have a spire for such a temple plan is to have the Bhumija style, as we've seen at the temple of Gondeshwar and Nasik. But because it's an old established site of pilgrimage, the patrons want to make it Shekhari. And so if you look at the spire from the top, it is Shekhari. But if you look at it diagonally, it is Bhumija. This is what it looks like from another angle. Shekhari from front and Bhumija from the diagonals. You have similar kinds of temples being built everywhere, such as the Ghat says Nasik. But while here the spire, the Garbhagriha, has a roof that is Shekhari, in front of it the Sabha Mandapa borrows on a different Central Indian style. And right at the corners, you have something that's straight out of the Mughals. And then you have the third style, which is the Maratha style, which is really a style of Kutina architecture completely developed in the 18th century that resembles nothing before it. You have shapes borrowed from the Sultanates and from the Mughals, but they are composed in ways that are completely different. Sometimes they completely reinvent shapes. So as opposed to having the five edicule square base topped by circular or polygonal stories, here you have that square base which just has a conical tower on top. And the commonest is to have these kinds of towers with four minarets at the four corners and a dome in place of an amlaka. So the logic of this shikhara is that of a South Indian temple. Some of the elements such as the dome and the four minarets come out of the sultanates and the individual edicules on every story are straight out of a Mughal architectural vocabulary with the curvilinear Bangla roof. And here you have examples of smaller shrines. This is at the fort of Kolaba outside of Alibag. You have bigger temples with the same kinds of arrangements, but the logic is the same. Step tiers with edicules rising all the way to a small amlaka. And here you have variants on the same where instead of making polygons on top, you have squares rising all the way to the top with a dome right. Now, you start looking at Muharram processions in Western India and the Taziyas that they build start looking exactly like these temples. The Muharram procession was part of a secular celebration. Muharram was not exclusively Muslim. It was also celebrated as Imam Jayanti in Bombay. We have lots of accounts of a carnival-like atmosphere during Muharram in which these big taziyas were taken out in procession and immersed into the water eventually. If you look at these taziyas, they resemble in form a lot of the Maratha temples. And in fact, it is important to note that this is again a regional style, not limited to religion, but something that everybody does. This is how you mark power, piety and religious devotion, whether it be a temple or a Muharram procession. Thank you.